If you've been following along with our channel, then you'll remember a few weeks ago we did a fun challenge called the eight point star. We even had one subscriber go so far as to say that this drill is addictive and I couldn't agree more. And if you've really been following along with this channel or checking out our old content, it, what feels like an eternity ago, we did a drill called the outside in. Both of these drills were something that you can set up and do by yourself, challenge yourself. You can also sit across the table from a friend, take turns and challenge them. And it's even something that you can do distance. It's something that can be just a lot of fun to challenge yourself with. So we've decided to go ahead and put a few of these together. So today I'd like to introduce you to one that is super challenging, super chaotic, and let's take a look and then you can tackle this and see how it goes for you. Just like with the last two challenge drills that we put out there, this one you are going to start with eight of your imaginary opponent's buttons already on the board. You get to shoot eight of your buttons and the goal is to get the highest score you possibly can. So just like in regular Crokinole, the objective is to knock your opponents off the board and get yours into the highest point regions, ideally all the way into the center. At the end, when you shot all eight, then you, if there are any opponent's buttons remaining on the board, they get subtracted from your score. But on the other end of that spectrum, if you're able to successfully knock all of their buttons off and still have one or two or three of your shooters left, you are then allowed to shoot at an open 20 to pad your score even more. The one we're going to tackle today, the challenge and the skill for this week, this drill we call it the far side drill because as you can see, you take your eight opponents, imaginary opponents buttons, and you place them on the far side of each of the eight pegs. And then just like the other drills, we're going to fire eight of our buttons to get the best score we possibly can. No rules as to which order you go after them in, so I'm going to talk through my thinking and my strategy here on this one, and then probably afterward, I'll do it again without talking so I can focus and maybe try to beat my first score. The other thing that we have going on in this week's video is after I've done it, you are going to get to watch not one, but two other people take on this challenge. One, someone you're familiar with, Mac, our tech guy, but we also have in the studio today an exciting special guest by the name of Lydia. Lydia is probably going to step in here and school us all. Let's see how it goes. Now for this one, what I am going to do is I'm going to attempt the Rick O'Shea 20 off this one here on the near side. Hopefully I get that button off, but my main focus is dropping that 20. I got the off, I did not get the 20. Now I am going to try to take these two out and quite honestly, I'm hoping that somewhere in the midst of this chaos, my shooter hits the one that's already there because right now it's not really my friend for dropping a 20. Okay. Come over here and attempt a double on this side. Oh, got some shifty buttons going on there. See what I talk about with this drill, it sets up differently every time and you can see that I'm already getting myself in an interesting situation here of uh, what am I gonna go after and not end up knocking my own off. Okay, that's good. I moved that one out of the way. Now I'm hoping to remove this one and maybe bump that one of mine further in. We'll see what happens here. Okay, my challenge is that I'm getting this guy buried so bad, I'm not sure how I'm gonna get him out of there without sacrificing one of my own. And you know what, that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna sacrifice one of my own. I'm gonna try to drive this into those two and see if I can, uh, see if I can get some yellow out of there. Hopefully lose more yellow off the board than black. Um, that was an epic fail because, uh, yeah. Two black go off, one yellow. Don't laugh at me, you two. All right, so now my last shot, like I say, every time you do this, there's different challenges. This time the challenge is gonna be to get through my own two here and hit and stick. So a bit of a, it's a bit of a narrow path, but I think it's gonna go. Ah, all right, 
So adding up the points, I have three 15, so that's 45, 55, 60 points on the board. Not terrible. It's actually uh, pretty good given this challenge. So what we're going to do is I'll quickly set it up again. So I've got this set up again. This time I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna try to keep my mole shut. It doesn't come all that naturally to me. Um, but the other thing I just like to say, I don't get too uptight about these things, be the, the buttons being buttons being set perfectly behind the post. Just roughly, you wanna have them straight on the far side of the post and uh, set up and get back to the fun of flicking. So 60 was my score the first time. Now I'm gonna really concentrate and see if I can improve on that. Wish me fun. All right, so like I always do, anything that's touching a line, I move it back, so that's there. I have 120 that I was able to sink, so 20, 30, 40, 50, 65, and 70. So I did in fact beat my score from the first time around, which always feels good, and uh, that's the great thing about this drill, and as you'll see, that time when, when I played through that, completely different challenges set up for me. There were a couple of times that I didn't have to, but I chose to shoot through my own, to do that ricochet through my own button. Very stressful, um, not very stressful, but the nice thing about this is, is you're just playing against yourself. There's no game on the line, so it's an opportunity to just just experiment and play and challenge yourself to do different things that you may not feel brave enough to do in a match against an opponent that you really don't wanna lose. Um, but yeah, now what I would do if I didn't need to step aside and let somebody else try this, what I do is I just keep challenging myself to try to beat that score and beat that score, see how strong a store, score I could get. But I am going to step out of here, give this seat up, and let both Mackenzie and Lydia show you. Uh, just, uh, you know, you're gonna get to see two different people play it, maybe different strategies, different outcome, some different stuff comes up. And uh, yeah, please comment down below and tell us what you thought of this drill, as well as um, what is the best score you're able to get, and most importantly, who are you gonna challenge on this far side drill? all the dust. One off. <laughs> Unorthodox, but effective. Hogan's Alley let me down. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. So you have? I have uh, these cancel. Yep. And then these cancel. Yep. I got beat. You have negative five. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's yeah. real tough. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
I didn't think there was room through there. That was a nice shot. <laughs> So 10 points. 10 points. Much hey, that's better than negative. better than last time. Much better. So one of the other things that I didn't even realize, but uh, a skill that you get to work on with this is you see that both shots when you took a, the buttons that were on the far side of the pet, like the furthest away from you, mm. um, it is easier to shoot those hard, but there's no chance of keeping your button on when you do. Right. So to work to like, if you can get to a place where you can hit and keep stick, those on. If you can hit and stick on those, that's a that's a great skill to have. So uh, yeah, so that's those just, are tough to yeah. hit and stick. Yep. Oh, it's super tough. Yeah. So what what are your overall impressions of the drill? Honestly, yeah. makes you think because, like I said before, if you're not thinking about keeping your shooter on, you're just focused on how can I get that off? How can I get that off? So, very good for that. Cool. Keeping you on your toes. Yeah? Yep. Awesome. Now, we should get young Lydia to... Uh, we should get Big L. Big L. <laughs> You didn't hit a yellow one, so that goes too. Oh! -ho! Nice. Alright, so those would cancel, those would cancel, those would cancel, and you have a minus 15. Think you can do better? If you come from here, that way you can maybe get this yellow one out and end up with another one of yours in the 15. Nice. Now, you may want to hit this one from the outside. Oh, love it. That's tough, but you know what you can do if you want? You can go through your own if you want to. Yep, but now it... Woo, and a 20. Wow. 20, 30, 40, 55, 70, 85. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! That's awesome. All right, really hope you enjoyed seeing that challenge in action. And I think what you probably noticed is that when different people play uh, a few rounds that all kinds of different scenarios set up and it gives you the opportunity to work on all sorts of different skill sets like hit and stick, like the double takeouts, going through your own, all those different things. And now I think the question that's probably burning in your mind and we might be able to answer is how well do these scores that you can see translate into action Actual crokinole. So I think we need to get some matches on record of, uh, to see if, as Mackenzie likes to call her, the big L, Lydia, see how her scores match up in real crokinole against both uh, Mackenzie and myself. So stay tuned for that. Make it a great day and as always, enjoy playing the greatest game on earth. <laughs>